Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Barbados. ask you to remain standing for the invocation, which will be led by the Reverend Dr. Nigel Taylor, President of the Barbados Evangelical Association. Reverend Dr. Taylor. Let us pray. We thank you today, our Heavenly Father, for your graciousness in strengthening, restoring, and inspiring us to do your will and our calling. As we meet today to formally launch the Constitutional Advisory Commission, we seek direction from you. As we deliberate the drafting and the continued drafting of our new Constitution. We pray that you, the creator of the universe and the governor of all nations would preside in our sessions today and beyond. Enlighten our minds with a portion of heavenly wisdom. Influence our hearts with a love of truth and justice. And crown our labors with complete and abundant success. Give unto us this day and beyond clarity of thought. And Lord, as we entrust ourselves as steward of your creation. We pray that you may guide our hearts that as we make our decisions singularly and collectively, we would seek first in all things we do together to advance this, our country, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Honorable Santia Bradshaw, Acting Prime Minister of Barbados. Honorable Sir Patterson Cheltenham, Chief Justice of Barbados. Honorable Dale Marshall, Attorney General and Senior Minister for Governance. Other members of cabinet, Honorable President of the Senate, Chairman of the Barbados Christian Council, Mr. Justice Sherman Moore, other members of the Senate and the House of Assembly, Sir Richard Cheltenham, Chairman, Mr. Justice Christopher Blackman and members of the Constitutional Reform Commission, Ms. Gail Atkins, Director General for Governance, other senior government officials, leaders and representatives of special interest groups, specially invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. My name is Sharon Lynch and I am your master of ceremonies for this morning's proceedings. 
Today marks another milestone in our country's journey following its transition to Republican status on November 30th last year. It is with pleasure that I welcome you to the official launch of the Constitutional Reform Commission. You will recall that the 10-member commission and the secretary to the commission were sworn in earlier this week by acting president, the very Reverend Jeffrey Gibson. Today, they begin their work with their first official meeting. But before that next phase begins, we hear from Attorney General and Senior Minister for Governance, the Honorable Dale Marshall, under whose purview the Commission falls, Minister Marshall. Acting Prime Minister Bradshaw, my Lord Chief Justice, members of Cabinet, members of the Senate and members of Parliament, Director General Atkins and other members of the Public Service, Mr. Chairman and your members, Mr. Justice Sherman Moore, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Just a few days ago, the members and secretary of the Constitution Reform Commission took their oaths of office. Today's official launch of that commission represents the first steps in a journey that we as a country last embarked on near 30 years ago. Our Constitution defines and protects citizens' rights. It limits and balances government's power in relation to individuals and institutions. And it is therefore the standard against which all other laws are measured. Indeed, in its opening clause, the Constitution establishes itself as that standard by declaring it to be the supreme law of the land. And that clause states, and I quote, the constitu this Constitution is the supreme law of Barbados, and subject to the provisions of this Constitution, if any other law is inconsistent with this Constitution, this Constitution shall prevail, and the other law shall, to the extent of the inconsistency, be void. No one can doubt the importance of taking a periodic hard look at that document against which whatever we do is measured. In fact, within a decade of the coming into force of our Constitution in 1966, it was apparent to the government that we needed to subject that document to significant public scrutiny. Constitutions are a living document and must both be strong enough to withstand the buffeting of the winds of change while at the same time being adaptable and adjusting and changing when circumstances require. Neither legal thinking nor our societies have stood still over the years. And we must ensure that our supreme law takes into account, where appropriate, the developments in the law and our changing societal norms. Consider, for example, the progression from the legality of capital punishment, which was mandatory, to the current position seen in the decisions of the Caribbean Court of Justice in the case of Nerve which ruled that the mandatory death penalty in Barbados was unconstitutional. Consider also the emerging trend in the approach of regional courts in respect of LGBTQI rights and the constitutional protection of those rights. And in the last 56 years, our parliament has amended our constitution 23 times, some by way of direct amendment and others by way of indirect amendment. Some of those amendments have been far-reaching, such as the establishment of the CCJ as our final court of appeal, and the removal of the Queen as our head of state, and replacing her with a Barbadian president. Others have been of less impact, though of equal importance. The first national review of the Barbados Constitution was conducted by the Cox Commission, appointed in 1977, and which submitted its report in 1979. And that commission was appointed to review the Constitution and to consider a system of national honors and a national table of precedents. Somehow, 
it doesn't seem to rise to the level that we might anticipate. That commission was chaired by Mense A. Cox, as he then was. And the Cox Commission made several recommendations on many of the clauses of that constitution, but more along the lines of consideration of important areas in which the constitution might be changed by amendment only. That commission made many important recommendations, including the establishment of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, which was ultimately acted on by Parliament by way of a constitutional amendment in 1981. And in 1986, another commission to review the Constitution of Barbados was established. That commission was chaired by Henry de B. Ford, QC MP, as he then was. And it included nine other eminent Barbadians. That commission submitted its report to His Excellency Sir Clifford Husbands, Governor General, in December of 1998. As with the Cox Commission, the Ford Commission made recommendations on parts of the Constitution which could be changed by amendment. And included among those significant recommendations was the move towards a republican system of government with a Barbadian as head of state, something that it took us 23 years before we could take that bold step. The Bajan experience with our Constitution demonstrates the three established bases for a constitutional reform, these being the requirements of constitutional modernization, the lessons of governance gained from experience in governing, and the need to deepen our democratic processes. In recent days, the government has been criticized for taking too long to get on with the process of constitutional reform. Let me remind those commentators that the course of constitutional reform properly done is not something to be hastened and raced along. It is a lengthy and complex and costly process. And the consultative process that the Commission will take charge of is no small undertaking. In fact, the Ford Commission met 112 times in its life of 26 months. We have been methodical in our work in getting this process off the ground and in making sure that the best possible arrangements for this Commission are put in place there simply can be no false steps. We've had to consider carefully such things as the manner in which the commission will be operating. How will it be able to capture the interests of the Barbadian public? How will we carry out the process of educating the Barbadian public on the various issues that are to be considered? How will we utilize the new platforms of communication in order to reach every possible Barbadian? Our Prime Minister is on record as saying that we will be requiring the deepest possible consultation across every community and sector of Barbados and on every element of our Constitution. And that is exactly what will be done. But this is not the Barbados of the 1970s or the 1990s. What worked in those days will hardly capture the interests of the millennial Bajan. And in large measure, it is the voice of the millennial Barbadian that will perhaps need to be the most heard since this will be their constitution. I doubt that they will come out to town hall meetings in the night as I did while following the Ford Commission meetings. I doubt that they'll be looking to the print media for their information. Equally too, some of the new rights that are emerging for the Commission's consideration will take on a special significance for the younger Bajan. Rights that are beginning to coalesce around such concepts as the right to digital security and the right to one's own digital identity, as well as the right of equality and access to digital and computing spaces. We must also find the means to fully engage the Barbadian diaspora in this process, whose interest in and commitment to Barbados has never flagged over the years and cannot be doubted. This commission will no doubt be invited by contributors to revisit ground that has already been covered by the Cox and Ford commissions. That is not a bad thing. I expect engagement on all of the issues that have gripped the imagination of constitutional theorists, political scientists, and political practitioners, such as the 
relevance in today's world of the first past the post system, proportional representation, term limits and fixed election dates, the consideration of the separation of powers document, sorry, the separation of powers doctrine is timely, the nature of the public service, the role of the public servant in politics, citizenship rights, and so many more. Mr. Chairman, your commission is not merely a review commission. It is a commission tasked with the reform of the Constitution, arguably a much wider scope of inquiry. It is established as an advisory commission under the Commissions of Inquiry Act and has the solemn task of working with all of Barbados to craft a new constitution for our nation. The commission will not be starting with a blank slate since the document was prepared some decades ago. But even that draft has been overtaken by time, legal thinking, and recent court decisions. We also have many constitutions across the world from which we can draw to extract those things that are relevant to us. I wish to underscore the point, Mr. Chairman, that everything is open for discussion. Yes, there are some elements, such as the Bill of Rights, that are an essential part of any constitution. But what those rights look like, whether they should be expanded, limited, or adjusted, all are open for discussion. There are to be no sacred cows in this process. Out of this consultation, I expect that a draft constitution will be delivered to the country. And in that regard, the drafting services of Mr. Justice Sherman Moore and the former Chief Parliamentary Counsel has been made available to the Commission. I am honored as the Attorney General to have a small role to play in this process of constitutional reform and getting it to this point. But the heavy lifting now begins. I have absolute confidence in the Commission as it is constituted and I'm sure that the product will reflect their varied experiences and their solid intellect. But it will be tough going. Mr. Chairman, my friends tell me that when I find the work of literature that I enjoy, I find a way to weave it into every speech. It is true. And so I end with the words of Hilton Vaughan, his poem to the unborn leader which I think is opposite for this occasion. You who may come a hundred years after our troubled bones are dust, far-seeing statesmen born to lead and worthiest of the people's trust. Turn these few pages in that hour when by dark doubts you are assailed of what it boots to shape their power. Read what we won and where we failed and barb the word with wisdom fit, and build, O oh build, where we but dream. Expose, undo, repair, extend, as you, O oh master, best may deem. But whatsoever of ours you keep, whatever fades or disappears, above all else we send you this, the flaming first faith, of these first years. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, Honorable Dale Marshall, Attorney General and Senior Minister responsible for governance. And now, Having heard from the Attorney General some of the expectations for the Commission, it is time for us to meet its members and to learn a little bit about this distinguished group of persons. The task of presenting them falls to Ms. Gail Atkins, Director General for Governance. Ms. Atkins. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies, Acting Prime Minister, Chief Justice, Attorney General, Commissioners, distinguished 
ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, good morning. I now present to you members of the Constitutional Reform Commission and the Secretary to the Commission. I begin with the Chairman, the Honorable Mr. Justice Christopher Blackman. Mr. Justice Christopher Blackman is a retired Justice of Appeal of the Bahamas and of Belize. Prior to joining the appellate bench of the Bahamas in 2008, Mr. Justice Blackman served as a first instance judge, both in Belize and Barbados. He was appointed chairman of the CARICOM Competition Commission in July 2018 and chairman of the Employment Rights Tribunal of Barbados in August 2018, a post to which he has recently been appointed. Mr. Suleiman Mohamed Balbulia. Mr. Suleiman Balbulia is a graduate of the University of the West Indies in Management Studies, a Justice of the Peace, Muslim chaplain at the Cave Hill campus, and chair of the Barbados Childhood Obesity Prevention Coalition. Mr. Balbulia was awarded the Silver Trident of Excellence on November 30th, 2021, for, and I quote, his strong commitment to seeing Barbados become a place of inclusivity and mutual respect, and his contribution to bridging societal divides in underprivileged communities in Barbados and the region, end of quote. Mr. Balbulia is a member of the Intangible Cultural Heritage Committee and the Enslaved Burial Ground at Newton Development Committee. He sat on the Republican Status Transition Advisory Committee. He's also a guest lecturer at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus and the Regional Police Training Center on Faith and Diverse Cultures. Mr. Adriel Brathwick QC. Mr. Adriel Brathwick QC was elected to represent the constituency of St. Philip South in 2008. He was appointed as Attorney General in 2011, a position which he held until 2018. He also held the portfolio of the Minister of Home Affairs. Mr. Brathwaite was admitted as an attorney at law in 1987 and practiced in the Virgin Islands from 1991 until 2002 when he returned to Barbados. He subsequently founded his own law practice in 2007 and has since returned to that practice from 2018. In his practice, he provides advice on multinational transactions involving Barbados and China, Barbados and Venezuela, Barbados and Canada, and Barbados and the United States of America. Assists, he assists with the incorporation and licensing of entities in Barbados, including banks, mutual funds, and companies. His practice includes corporate and commercial work, banking and finance, tax, compliance, private clients, and trusts, real estate and conveyancing, directorship and protector services. Mr. Christopher DeCaries. Mr. Christopher DeCaries is Managing Director of FedNav International Limited, a subsidiary of Canada's largest bulk shipping company. He previously worked with the Barbados Light and Power, the ITC Group, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. He is a director of CIBC First Caribbean International Bank and has served on the boards of Trinidad Cement Limited, Banks Holdings Limited, Sajna Sajikor Financial Corporation and several international captive insurance companies. He was chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., World Cup Barbados Inc., the Barbados Entrepreneurship Foundation, the National Initiative for Service Excellence, and the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. He also served as president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados.
Miss Carrie-Anne Eiffel. Miss Carrie-Anne Eiffel is a former president of the Senate, having been elected to that position in March 2012. Her career as a senator, however, began in 2008, and before being appointed as president, she also served as deputy president. Ms. Eiffel became the youngest person to hold the post of president of the Senate, as well as the first female and the only person with a disability to serve in that office, which she held until May 2018. Ms. Eiffel has worked with several non-governmental and public sector organizations, including the Women in Development Program, Parent Education for Development in Barbados, Pardos, the National Disabilities Unit, and the Barbados Council for the Disabled. She is currently serving as the re-elected president of the Barbados Council for the Disabled after serving her allotted two terms as president. Ms. Shade Jemant. Ms. Shade Jemant is an attorney at law business coach and consultant with over 10 years of experience advising entrepreneurs and micro, small, and medium enterprises on various legal matters, commercial strategy, and business development opportunities. She's also a political commentator and radio personality who moderates on a weekly basis the VOB um, program Down to Brass Tax, which is a leading call-in program. Ms. Jemant has placed significant emphasis on community service throughout her career, giving time, resources, and expertise to causes focused primarily on women, youth, and entrepreneurs. She currently chairs the Allen School Board and serves as director on the boards of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. and the Barbados Tourism Product Authority. Mr. Khalil Kothliwala. Mr. Khalil Kothliwala is a Barbados scholar and student reading for a Bachelor of Laws at the University of the West Indies with a passion for people, civic and current affairs, history, politics, language, law, foreign policy, and effective communication. He is a prominent national and international debater. As a student leader, he has coached his school's debating club and nurtured its members in the art of debating and public speaking. Most recently, in the aftermath of the CXC 2020 results, he emerged as a leading student advocate, giving voice to the multitudes of disadvantaged students through his representations to heads of government and the Caribbean Examination Council. Mr. Kofliwala has an active interest in constitutionalism and is active in national public life, frequently commenting on national, regional, and international issues through his column in the Nation newspaper. Senator Gregory Nichols. Senator Gregory Nichols is an attorney at law who specializes in public law litigation. He was called to the local bar on October 13, 2000, and spent his early years at the law firm of George Walton, Payne and Company until he established his own law practice in September 2010. He has been the lead advocate in a number of seminal constitutional and administrative law actions before the courts. Senator Nichols has tutored in the law faculty, Cave Hill, in the law of torts, human rights law, and administrative law, and has also lectured in the faculty of social science, in business law, and in principles of public international law. Senator Nichols was first made a senator in 2003 at the age of 28, and at that time served until 2008. He was again appointed to the Senate in March 2022. Senator the Reverend Dr. John Rogers.
Senator Rogers has been an ordained minister in the Anglican Church for 20 years, where he has served in various capacities. He currently serves as the rector of St. George Parish Church and the rural dean of the St. John's Deanery. He also serves on the Inter-Anglican Commission on Faith, Unity, and Order, which advises the Archbishop of Canterbury on matters within the Anglican community. Dr. Rogers has also served as an independent senator. My apologies. Dr. Rogers also serves as an independent senator in the Parliament of Barbados and is a member of the disciplinary committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados. He has a passion for social justice, the rights and protection of children, and the development of local culture. Miss Marianne Redmond. Miss Marianne Redmond is a trained graduate teacher of 40 plus years experience and has been the president of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union since 2005. Her trade union activities have seen her serve at the level of third, second, and, and first vice president of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados. She has also held the position of first vice president of the Caribbean Union of Teachers. Her work has also included her contribution as a member of the National Advisory Council on Education. Ms. Redmond has also served as a member of the board of the National Council on Substance Abuse. She is presently a member of the Barbados delegation to the Caribbean Examination Council. And now, the secretary to the commission, Professor Cynthia, Cynthia Barrow-Giles. Professor Barrow-Giles is a professor of constitutional governance and politics at the University of the West Indies, Kefield campus, and distinguished senior fellow for the Constitutional Studies Program at the University of Texas at Austin for the 2022 to 2025 class. She is a former Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Deputy Dean of Outreach at the University of the West Indies, Kefil, and Head of Department. She has authored, co-authored, and co-edited numerous publications on governance in the Caribbean, including five books. She served on the St. Lucia Constitution Reform Commission from 2005 to 2011, and was appointed by Prime Minister Mayor Amor Motley to serve as advisor to the Barbados' Republican Status Transition Advisory Committee in 2021. For her public service, she was awarded the Principal's Award of Excellence in 2020, and in 2021, she was the recipient of the Vice-Chancellor's Award of Excellence, also for public service. Ladies and gentlemen, these, those are the members of the Constitutional Reform Commission and the Secretary. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ms. Atkins. So now you know more about what each member of the commission brings to the table. Next item on this morning's proceedings is an address, or I should say remarks, by the commission's chairman, the Honorable Mr. Justice Christopher Blackman. Mr. Justice Blackman. Good morning all. Acting Prime Minister, 
my Lord Chief Justice, Mr. Attorney, fellow commissioners of the Constitutional Reform Commission, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, We are honored that you have. Oh, I'll get rid of this foolishness. Okay. We are honored that you join us this morning for the launch of the commission. Mr. Attorney, we are aware of your responsibility within the cabinet of our republic for issues of governance, and I give you the assurance that the commissioners will pay equal attention to your words of encouragement, as well as to those of caution as we undertake the functions to which we subscribe to the oaths of office on Mandela's. As you yourself referred to it, the Barbados Constitution, which came into force in November 1966, had its most significant amendment in October of 2021, when it was changed to give effect to the determination and decision that Barbados should be a sovereign, democratic, and parliamentary re republic with a native-born person serving as head of state. During both the public debates across the country in their various fora, and the debates in Parliament on the constitutional change to Republican system of government, the government emphasized its commitment to engage in an extensive consultation with the Barbadian public on a new constitution. Pursuant to that commitment, this commission has been appointed as an advisory commission by His Excellency the Acting President under the provisions of the Commissions of Inquiry Act 112 of the Laws of Barbados, which states, and I quote, the President may, whenever it is deemed expedient in the public interest, appoint one or more commissioners to be a commission of inquiry as an advisory commission connected with the good government of Barbados. In that regard, we've been appointed to one, examine, consider, and inquire into the Barbados Constitution on all other related laws and matters with the view to the development and enactment of a new constitution for Barbados. Secondly, after due inquiry, examination, and study, to report in writing, giving opinions, making such recommendations, and providing for consideration a draft constitution, as in the opinion of the commissioners, is necessary and desirable to meet the circumstances of a 21st century Barbados, and that will promote the peace order and good governance on Barbados. And thirdly, consider all other relevant matters which in their own discretion are relevant to the above aims and objective. In the discharge of its duty as a commission of inquiry, the commission is mandated to have the broadest possible consultation with Barbadians at home or abroad and in the diaspora by such manner and procedure as it deems reasonable and, ap and appropriate. Generally, to increase public interest in the subject of constitutional reform by means of meetings, media programs, engagements both face-to-face -face and virtual, materials, whether digital or otherwise, and also to prepare and distribute such material memoranda which will deepen public knowledge in the Constitution and the draft which is being prepared, and prepare and submit its written report within 18 months from the date of our appointment. The work of the Commission is being facilitated with a working draft document prepared by the Honorable Mr. Justice Sherman Moore, CHB, a retired Justice of Appeal as legal draftsman to the, to the Commission. Prior to his judicial appointment in October 1997, Mr. Justice Moore was Chief Parliamentary Counsel, and we are indeed fortunate to have available to us the skills and experience that Mr. Justice Moore 
brings to the assignment. We are obliged to you, sir. Fellow commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, the assignment and appointment of Mr. Gail Atkins, of Director General Governance to this commission, as its most senior executive officer, is of considerable importance in that such an appointment conveys the undoubted assurance that the work of the commission will be taken seriously and that the necessary support will be provided for it to be effective. Immediately following this official launch, the Commission will have its first formal working session to elect a Deputy Chairman and to put in place a number of administrative arrangements to enable the Commission to be fully operational. I have deliberately said first formal working session because in actuality a great deal has been happening behind the scenes for some time now. And by way of an aside, I will, while the program had at some point indicated that we will have taken some questions, where we, the way we're running for time, I might have to pass on that and ask the press to meet me after the business session. But we have to finish by a particular time to accommodate uh, a commissioner who has to get away for a particular obligation before uh, May Day. So I, I ask your indulgence in that regard. On a personal note, I will observe it's been heartening and encouraging to read letters and other articles in the press from concerned members of the public on issues such as methods of voting, the effect and impact of treaties entered into on the constitutional rights of Barbadians. There's a very insightful letter into this, in this Monday's paper on the effect of treaties on the rights of Barbadians by an uh, old uh, schoolmate um, that I found is very interesting. And the one that came a few weeks ago on the place of the Charter of Barbados in our Constitution before this formal launch. I wish to stress that the Commission warmly welcomes any constructive suggestions to strengthen and advance the exercise upon which we are embarked, both as to the manner of engagement and the processes to be used. And in that regard, I wish to recognize that within the last 24 hours, I got a very long and detailed uh, email from the former leader of the opposition, Bishop Joseph Adderley, suggesting ways in which we could do things or reach out to people. And so I welcome anyone who wishes to pass ideas on to the Secretariat. In the very near future, details will be given as to where comments and suggestions may be, may be emailed or delivered. Significant institutions such as the Office of the President, the Office of the Prime Minister, the Judiciary, the Media, Trade Unions, Business Organizations, the Religious Community and the Rastafarian Community, will political parties, professional and charitable organizations, and other NGOs will be afforded an opportunity to meet privately with the Commission. A similar courtesy will be afforded any group that requests such a meeting. The Commission will pursue consultations with the con Commissions on Parliamentary Reform on that on local governance to determine the impact and implications of the work of those commissions on the matters we are required to consider. Fellow commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, this commission was preceded by the Cox Commission and the Ford Commission, both of which laid the foundations for the good government and governance of Barbados, which we've enjoyed for the past 55 years. Those commissions have helped to build the constitutional structure of Barbados, which has led us to this place at this time. It is now envisaged that this commission will be required to take 
a more transformational approach to ensure, as we've been urged by the learned Attorney General, that our Supreme Law takes into account, where appropriate, developments in the law and societal norms for the next century and beyond. Fortuitously, as I was preparing these remarks, Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, the President of the Caribbean Court of Justice, in a speech delivered in Georgetown, Guyana, to mark the 50th anniversary of the, the Guyana Bar Association, made some observations that I consider valuable and relevant to the issues which we are obliged to consider. He observed that Guyana has the most advanced constitution in the Anglophone Caribbean, the only one of its kind that takes care to set out in clear and express terms the fundamental principles and bases undergirding the political, economic, and social order. Mr. Justice Saunders also observed that Guyana is the only CARICOM country to expressly pay regard to international instruments to which that country has acceded. And the recognition of what has been referred to, referred to as second generation human rights. He also stated that Guyana is the only country that has gone out of its way to pay specific and due regard to the aspirations of its young people and to the status of women. I am honored to say to you that as a result of a reach out by the distinguished secretary of the commission, Professor Cynthia Barra Giles, to the Minister of Home Affairs of Guyana, the Honorable Brinley Ben. Copies of the Guyana Constitution have been provided to assist the commission in its work. I urge all commissioners to diligently examine and consider this very valuable reference document to see what we may adopt to enhance the draft constitution we now have to consider. Fellow commissioners, the remarks made by the esteemed president of the CCJ are very timely. In addition to the consideration of the Guyanese constitution, we will also do well to look at the Belize constitution, which has some interesting provisions we seek to deal with how the Senate has an oversight of the work of bodies such as the Ombudsman, the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and the recommendation process for independence, for independent senators. And the constitution of other Commonwealth countries such as the Bahamas, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Malta, and indeed, the wider world is a parliamentary Republican system. Acting Prime Minister, my Lord Chief Justice, Mr. Attorney, fellow commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. The task which we are about to embark on is the most consequential in our long history. Fashioning a new constitution for the 21st century and beyond should fill us both with excitement and trepidation. We may only have one chance to get it right. Generations to come will judge us on how adequately we rose to the occasion. And I use the word we advisedly because this is not a task entrusted only to the few. All Bajans shoulder that responsibility. All of us have a responsibility to ensure we get it right as far as possible. A constitution reflects the hopes and dreams of a nation. It tells the rest of the world who we are, what we believe, and what we aspire to be. It calls for bold and innovative thinking at the same time as sober and cautious reflection. The Canadian constitutional scholar Richard Albert in the paper published some while ago noted that, and I quote, a constitution is a window into the soul of the citizenry, a mirror in which citizens should see themselves and their aspirations reflected, precisely because it is citizens themselves who should give continuing shape and content to their constitutional text, end of quote. 
It is therefore with both humility and a sense of the historic nature of this occasion that I trust that the final product of our deliberations, the Constitution of Barbados, might earn the approval and respect of future historians, serve as a template of choice for those who follow us in becoming a parliamentary republic, and be the mirror in which the citizens of Barbados should see themselves and their aspirations reflected. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Justice Blackman, Chairman of the Commission. And now the task of expressing thanks this morning goes to Commissioner, Mr. Adriel Brathwit. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good morning, Acting Prime Minister, Malar Chief Justice, Attorney General, members of Cabinet, members of Parliament, including the Senate, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of, of the media. And I say members of the media, not because you're not ladies and gentlemen, but because I want to especially thank you. I want to thank you not only for attending here this morning, but because you have a significant role to, to play in this process over the next 15 months, because we're gonna need your continued dedication and attention to ensure that we reach all Barbadians wherever they are. And that's why I wanted to signal our, our thanks to you not only for this morning, but anticipate your continued role with us. I want to thank the Attorney General and the, and the Chair um, for your comprehensive um, presentations. We are fully aware, and, and I say we, I mean the Commissioners, we're fully aware of our challenges ahead. Um, to the Attorney General, I, I noticed that you did tell us about the volume of work, but I don't believe you told us that you expected us to spend at least one evening and every three nights working. Uh, that was an after the fact, but we, we recognize the significance of what we are about to undertake and we will ensure that we make Barbados um, proud um, 15 months from now when we're finished our, our tasks. And finally, I want to thank the acting prime minister, the chief justice and other significant members of, of other members of cabinet uh, and government, because what it signals to us and to the public is how seriously government has taken this task in terms of forming this commission. Um, and your attendance here this morning, I, I think, manifests your, your belief in the process that we're about to undertake. Um, so my thanks on behalf of my fellow commissioners and, and myself for your attendance here this morning. So thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Adriel Brathwit. This brings us to the end of the formal part of this morning. Members of the commission will shortly begin their deliberations, and I want to wish you every success in your first official meeting. I also want to remind members of the commission that before you begin, I know you are eager, that there will be an official photo, and so if you can just ready yourselves for that. For the rest of our audience this morning, I just wish you a great day and a great weekend. Thank you, everyone.